is 6.15. <laughs> the clock's still a little off. Um, on May 13th, 2024, 6.15, the select board meeting of Rochester, Vermont is commencing. Um, we were going to start out by placing uh, our open meeting law conformity in. Um, we have been posted in three places around town on a website and emailed to a long list of people that are interested in getting that. If you're interested in getting this emailed to you, just let Julie know. Frank and I have read over prior meeting minutes. Um, we have two sets to review. Our last select board meeting was April 22nd, 2024. Um, that was relatively straightforward and easy did you read them i read I them there's one correction in there yep. i made on the i think it was that one uh yep. the nine thousand and the fire department had raised 900 it said it in said there, it said it nine, 9 comma zero zero but it was nine comma zero 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 <coughs> good job so, so i moved that we accept the meetings uh the minutes as corrected i second that all in favor all right the second batch, very well piped up, long meeting. It was our informational meeting, so hats off to Julie for capturing all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, very conclusive. And she, she grabbed the essence of the meeting. I have read it. I move that we accept these minutes as well. I second that. All in favor? All right. We have, um, let's do those bids. And get that yeah. Um, ex excuse me, one quick question. Hi, Martha. Yeah, what was the date of that uh, the info meeting? I've forgotten. I'm sorry. Uh, April you 20, didn't mention. April 29th, 2024. April 29th. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sure. Um, we're going to be moving our new business agenda around a little bit as it's listed on the agenda. And we're going to start with the bid opening. We have people um, perhaps on Zoom waiting to hear about bids. So if Cricket wants to come on up, we have a pair of scissors. Start with their retaining wall. Yep. Yes, this, these are the, uh, the bids that were received for the retaining wall project, which is right out in the yard here. I'm going to go take a peek. It's right over there. Yes. <laughs> Improvements to reconstruction, basically, of about 60 linear feet of that. Looks like we got one, two, three, four, five bids, three hard copy, two email. Very well, good. Yep. Good response. That's excellent. Yep. Very good turnout. So, first email bid is from Aldergetty Construction, Derek Aldergetty, over in Randolph. I'll just read the final number, and these are apparent bid results, so we won't choose a contractor tonight, but we will within the next week, was what we put in the bid documents. So we'll get back to everybody with apparent bid results fairly quickly, probably tomorrow, and then we'll get back to the winning contractor within a week. So, Derek Aldergetty, Aldergetty Construction, $43,435. Next email bid came from Blue Mountain Trucking and Excavating in South Rygate, Vermont. Came via email for $98,100, even. Third one, these aren't in any particular order. ECS excavating. Hard copy came in at $44,988.15 cents. It's a close race there. Um, next hard copy bid, fourth bid, from Neil Daniels, Daniels Construction down in Windsor, Scutney, Scutney. Uh, 89,620 even. That was a hard copy. 
That was a hard copy, yep. yep. Okay. And all of these folks were at the pre-bid meeting. Last one, fifth one, hard copy is from Kingsbury. $72,362.50, five zero. So that's a very good turnout. And I'll get those tabulated on a standard bid tab and then we'll get back to get talk Do through it and get back to have a little session there and figure it out. Figure it out. Yep. yep. Make sure everybody um, so that's that's that project. Any any questions if anybody has on that project? All of these contractors know to get this project on this year. Yep. Yep, yep that was all part of it. Yep, it's all yep. part of the package. Yep. Yeah. Um, switch to the other project. Skate space. Yeah. Skate space. We had one bid come in for the skate space. There were three or four folks at the pre-bid meeting, but a slightly smaller crew. It's a little bit more specialty work. Uh, that came via email, and it came from a guy by the name of Jeff Hall. He does business under the name Standard Construction. He's from Middlesex, Moortown area. And his number was $92,105, even. What was it, standard construction? Is that standard one? construction, yeah. Yeah, yep. just one. One's better than none. Yeah, at least we got one. Okay. Right. That was a hard copy. Okay. So everybody got Very that? Good. No, that, that was an email, wasn't it? That was, was it? Yeah, it was an email. Was it an email? It was an email? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good catch. Thank Not you. that it really matters where you love. No, <laughs> I yeah. just want to write Okay, down. thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, no problem. We'll hear the outcome at our next meeting. Okay, that takes care of that stuff. Right. Um, let's move on to what was at the top of our new business, um, compost permit update and discussion. Um, Zach Kavakis is here. He has some handouts if anyone's interested. Um, his business has been around for a few years already up on Jerusalem Hill. What he's doing is um, changing the location, but on the same property, but changing to a different location. If you want to take that away. Yeah, um, so we can say my name's Zach. I don't use the compost. Um, I have the operation of the Brown Farm, the end of Jerusalem Hill. Um, I've been doing it, it'll be, this fall will be three years up there. Um, so the permit that I have um, is expiring. <clears throat> also, my partner who was on that permit, um, he's getting done when the permit's up. And uh, <clears throat> due to a few different things, um, I need to move the location on the property um, a little further away from you know, a neighbor. You know, just to be quite frank. Um, so just to sum up what I wrote in my thing, <clears throat> basically it's going to be the same layout, um, just, you know, literally a couple hundred yards further up the hill behind their house. <clears throat> um, we're doing this because uh, they had a state consultant uh, come out, um, James McSweeney, and uh, it was like free consulting that they offer. And um, we kind of figured out that my mixing pad and a certain neighbor's house is in the same odor corridor basically <laughs> um more or less if you want to put it in a fancy term mm -hmm. um that's that's how he summed it up to me um and basically it's it's at a slope and it's right in line with this one person's house um so basically what happened was last summer uh she called the state a handful of times every time this, uh, the state is called they come out um and you know every time come out look at the site give me a list of things that they think I could improve on. <clears throat> um, and that's when they all offered the free consulting. Uh, and so the guy came out and uh, he gave me a list of things. Like I said, I made improvements, um, you know, the complaint stopped. <clears throat> Basically, it was a combination of just having to cover the piles a little heavier with wood chips. Um, and, you know, kind of because of that, if you do a light cover, basically birds can get in. And then uh, once that happens, then other animals will come as well. Mm -hmm. um, currently, I don't have any animals getting into uh, anything right now. Um, the end of winter, I had some crows uh, that were desperate for a meal trying to get into stuff. But what I did to mitigate that was 
put um, fishing line above the receiving area or around these poles. So I made like a grid. So basically the birds will fly into it and they kind of bounce off and fly away. Like that way they don't get hurt and I don't have to, you know, you know, kill them or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, because, you know, more or less because of those complaints, um, also accessibility, um, I think it'd just be a better location to do it up on that particular area. Okay, so anybody got any questions that's present here? We, the select board, we love sharing this information with everyone. We're also going to be referring Zach to the planning zoning board, and we advised him that he would also um, need to visit a meeting there so that he had the blessings of both entities. Um, and uh, that way he knows that you know, no one's going to say, I didn't, I was left out, I didn't get a chance to speak. So if there is anybody out there in TV land, they can, um, they can also catch up with a question for Zach at the planning meeting, which would be the first Tuesday of June at 6.30 right here. Um, that's also a Zoom meeting as well. So um, there is that one more opportunity, but the select board, um, we, we appreciate the fact that you've made adjustments and um, so we will continue to support. And so from this point of view, as long as the planning board's okay with it, we're okay with it. Do you feel yeah. fine? Yeah. Uh, we didn't sign anything previously no. for you, Zach, did we? <coughs> no. Uh, we we had, honest, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure we referred you back to the zoning when yeah, we did so this. Right. I kind of just wanted to cover both bases, kind of like she was right. saying. Uh, but also, I Appreciate kind of dealt with all this stuff the last time. And so I wanted to talk to everybody that I could because uh, I'm doing it. Um, this is you by myself. Yep, sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next thing on our list is picnic tables at the baseball fields, and this is listed as a discussion item. Um, no action will be taken, just discussion. And is Wendy on Zoom? She's here. She's here. Yeah. Oh, there you are. <laughs> so, um, tell us what you're looking for. So, um, the Tri Town Baseball Program has been playing at the field down by the tennis courts, mm -hmm. um, and it's a it's a beautiful area. It's great. We have a lot of spectators that come, and we've been offering like bake sales and things like that at the games for fundraising. And so, um, we had the idea that um, it'd be nice to have like some picnic tables for people to hang out with their families. You know, people bring blankets, but if they want to eat lunch after the game, have a picnic, or sometimes our games are at night, so to have, you know, grab a pizza, have a picnic while the game's playing. So um, Bethel Mills offered to donate, um, basically give us two tables for the price of one. Um, and so we were hoping to follow through with that and purchase the tables um, sooner than later since the season's already underway. Um, and, you know, the concern is the lawn mowing and the storage. So we can actually, um, we're, we're happy to put them wherever is the best spot um, that everybody's happy with um, in that area. And also we can store them in the dugouts when they're not in use, if that's an issue as well. Our season ends June 8th, so that's when... It is coming right down. <laughs> I know, that's what I mean. Like, it's a quick Better season. Than ever. We, we had the software given case. to us, so... Um, those would be the requirements. Typically, we would tend to say, you know, we've got picnic tables at the Lions Club, we've got picnic tables on the park, um, and they need to be put away um, by our highway staff and stored and this and that. Um, what do you think, Frank? They're going to take the responsibility for the tables. It, it, that's the biggest problem we have with, with them as it is. And vandalism. Is vandalism and also it leads to trash being left and that's an issue I think that we have to address. We have the problem on the park even at times. And that's and, where there's a lot of eyes on the park. Right. And so down there, it's so, pretty So isolated. that's the only issue I have. And, and as far as who maintains them and who takes care of them, up at the Lions Club, we kind of inherited that space. And we don't really deal with those. And they're 
pretty much there all the time. So we don't have much to do with the town crew takes care of these up here in the fall and they I can't say they're real happy about it but <laughs> they do it so. yeah I think that's the biggest thing we the well, worry we have is them. is that you know would if they're left there all the time they would be something that you know could collect Stuff yeah. that we don't we'll need there. Too. Monitor for trash and the problems. Yeah. Right now we okay. bring our own trash can in and out. I, and other than that, I don't really see a problem if you're willing to take care of them. I mean, that's really a big thing. Plus, you might keep some of the riprap out of the dugouts anyway. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah, paint, yeah. The, yeah, the artist, right <laughs> the artist that, that <laughs> go in there. <laughs> So yeah, I don't. I, guess, I don't have a problem with it. I guess it we're going to give an approval based on the fact that you are going to tuck them out of sight so that the lawn people don't have to move or mow around them, and uh, we'll we'll give it a test and see how it how it works out. So I would say go for it, um, and then we'll just revisit it again next year, <laughs> um, and then you can work it out with. Um, the uh, the tournaments that happen down there, whatever other events, if they wanted to use it, it, it would be your responsibility to work it out with the other the other entities. I think we can figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Yes, Martha. Yeah, I just have a quick question. I didn't quite hear what she said about um, getting the picnic tables from Bethel Mills. Is it two picnic tables and Bethel Mills is donating them? Did I hear that correctly? Two for the price of one. Two for the price of one, okay. Okay, all right, thank you. And then, uh, and they're agreeing um, to store them in the dugout when they're not in use? At the very least, yes. Okay, thank you, and will they have like a trash can or something? Did I hear you say something they about already, Frank? They, about are, trash? they already take care of that, so no, they're not, okay, adding, thank they're you. not adding any. I'm sorry. They're not I'm adding sorry, any, I didn't. They're not adding any trash cans. These are just the picnic tables. No. Okay, thank you, sorry. Yep. I couldn't, ha couldn't hear you, thank you. Okay, um, next on our list is the CDBG, Community Development Building Planning Block Grant. grant. <laughs> so this is about actually the original planning grant, which we got an extension, mm -hmm. $10,000 extension, and we have some funds left over on that and we got to wrap the whole thing up by June 30th, but we have this uh, preliminary architectural feasibility report that's under the, is one of the requirements for the USDA, and I printed out a copy for you guys. You can share. Okay. Um, as you can see, Vic and I are doing a large part of this particular piece, but Greg Gossens, who is the architect who is do, working under the $10,000 extension, agreed to include it in his scope of work. We met with him last Wednesday, and so that wouldn't cost anybody any more money. It would come under the same thing, but because it's an increase of his scope, um, we need an official uh, um, approval to amend the original um, to include this in the scope of the $10,000 work. That's that has to come from you guys. And I don't see my initials next to anything here. Yeah, aren't you You're lucky? lucky. <laughs> aren't you lucky? <laughs> <laughs> we are, so I guess um, we're in a pretty good position to approve that. Yeah, it's not going to cost you anything. Yeah. I moved it. And we, it's nice that he's including it. Except this is this feasibility report to accompany the grant. Yeah, I second that. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Easy. Okay, we have a couple applications from the cafe. One is for an outdoor consumption liquor license. I move that we accept that, as well as the first class restaurant license. I second those. And all in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. Do we sign this, don't we? No, no, sign. No, 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 I just, I get a verbal and then I just put it in the, it's right. portal. Good around. to go. Yeah. Um, there's a park use application for the library for June 8th summer program for kids. Um, I must have missed that one. There it is. Um, this is, you know, submitted by Maya. And um, I see no reason why we can't let the kids have some 
12.30 to 3 o'clock time on June 8th. Is that Friday? Yes. No, Saturday. Well, Saturday. Saturday. Have, oh, Saturday. Did, do we keep a calendar on the yeah, do use we? park yeah. use? And the park is free that Saturday? <laughs> yeah. free that Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> we get a lot of use. I move that we accept, we approve this application. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Are there any additions to the current agenda? We can add things to the agenda for discussion, but we would not be able to make any decisions about it. So if somebody wanted to throw something onto the agenda, they can. We can also have a public discussion after we go through our departmentals. Mason. Oh, so this is new business? There would be new business that we can discuss, but those, the select board can't make a decision on it until it's yeah. properly warned. Okay, because I wasn't real sure because things had changed on uh, the agenda. Uh, is this an appropriate time? This is the appropriate time. Okay. Um, I was hoping that a discussion item for next meeting could pursue on uh, the issues around the annual meeting this year where we had an initiative that passed and a discussion about uh, removing the uh, delinquent tax list from the town report. I would also like to add to the potentials of that discussion issues around the town report uh, being reviewed overall as an important educational tool for the community uh, in areas. For an example, we have passed initiatives over the last 50 years, maybe 12. But it's very difficult for the voters to have any historical understanding of what they are and what we had agreed upon. And this type of item could easily be included in the town report as an update and to be able to allow the citizens to understand uh, their history. Uh, that's one example. I feel like the uh, town uh, report also could do a better job of informing and educating folks about how to run for office and participate and some of those issues may be wanted to be reviewed overall but basically if if this discussion begins now in the next meeting that by now uh, by then uh, the following annual meeting we might be able to potentially do some items in the uh, town report okay Okay. I mean, it's, since we're not making any decisions, um, I, I just will footnote it by saying our town report is getting pretty hefty. Um, every year more pages get added and it, it becomes costly in printing and, and postage. But I think I remember something that I was saying that would be cut from a full page to a half page. <laughs> so maybe we can squeeze some more information yeah, in and there. And also if you look at it as a potential of increasing our quality of democracy and getting participation, uh, it actually might be a cost saver by getting more participation in the process. Yep. Okay. We'd be more than happy to continue that discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> anything else? We're going to have a public discussion after we go through the department reports, so, okay. Um, is there anybody here from the library? No. Moving right along. Highway report. That uh, should be short. Yeah. Stop snowing. Um, we got the Bethel Mountain Road done finally, which was great. Everything came out good. They're um, working on, I know Cooter met with uh, Rita today up on West Hill to do some much needed work on that road since the bridge is now passable with big trucks. So they're looking at what can be done up there and what we should focus on. And he's reviewing culverts. He's, when he inspects culverts, he like to uh, notify landowners. I'm working on a letter to landowners who have a driveway permit and it, when he reviews the culvert standards, 
Um, he inspects their culvert too, and we're working on a letter to notify the landowners of you know possibly needing their culverts replaced, which is the landowner's responsibility. But we're just trying to figure out how to address that okay. in a way that doesn't make the landowner upset. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it is their responsibility, but so we're working on that stuff, and he's grading and graveling as he as he goes. Okay. That's the time of year. Yep. We do have a utilities operator on hand. Everything's good. Everything is good. We like hearing that. I guess. <laughs> Wait till tomorrow. <laughs> do we have Jeff Gephardt? No. Any grant updates? I don't have any either. Good. Moving right along. Okay, those are our departments. We have old business, and under old business, I do have the name of John Lambert there. Um, this is, we're going into our public comment period as well, if that's okay. And so we'd like to keep things to three minutes or under, if possible, and that's usually plenty of time to say what you want to say. John, are you up first? Sure. Anybody else has any issues? No. I'm here to say that I am now four months into finally having something happen after my son was bit on the ankle. The dog has been removed from the property, and I'm just curious as to where we have come to with the questions I've asked before, as to being able to assist other people in this town to be able to make this process faster for them. We have formed a small subcommittee to review the dog ordinance that we had in place, which was kind of boilerplate standard thing. So we're going to get more specific with it. Um, we will include, um, when I Google, um, I just got bit by a dog in Vermont, what do I do? And there's, there's a lot of phone numbers that you can call immediately. Um, so we will incorporate that into the ordinance and uh, we now have a clear path um, on what to do when this happens. It seems the days of the uh, neighbors working things out over the fence are gone so we do need to update that because when it, when it comes to you know, uh, a neighborhood issue like this it, it does come to the town and we need to be ready for that. So. Because, again, it's not, you know, the dog's fault. So it's, if we could have done something sooner, maybe something. Well, we did have to go through the certain legal motions because things don't get worked out by neighbors like they used to. Um, and yes, it has been 90 days. Um, that, that part is, is very true. Um, up until a certain point, there was some limited um, actions we could have taken but the action of most recent was definitely a trigger. Thank you. Um, one last thing to put in there is we do need to figure out a way to, once the dog bite happens, there is a 10-day quarantine from the date that that happens. So that does need to be figured out here in the town. Okay. And that's statewide. Well, from my understanding, the dog is in a quarantine and will be there for 10 days. Yes. But it's supposed to happen immediately from the dog right. bite date. Yeah. So, but thank you. Fine. Any other discussion about this subject? Um, I actually came, I'm Mike Silver. Um, I live at 606 Fist Road, and uh, I didn't realize the dog had been taken away. Uh, my granddaughter was bitten last fall by the dog, and uh, you know, both dogs actually are, are sort of a menace. One is a, a herder and runs 10 times around your car as you try to drive in to park. And, um, but it, I'm glad to hear that the, uh, something's happened because my granddaughter was afraid to come and run around and play. Mm -hmm. And her bite was a broken skin bite? It wasn't broken skin, it was on the hand, mm -hmm. and the owner immediately just discounted it as nothing because it didn't break the skin, okay. but my granddaughter is traumatized by it, yes. you know. 
Yeah. How old was she? Uh, she turned eight three days ago. Yeah, that's a tough so time. So she was seven, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else? Anybody on Zoom? No, nope, there's guess. no hands I raised. Good. I wanted to say thank you to the town for getting this done finally. Right. I'm the landowner there, and yes. I completely exhausted every possible avenue of trying to deal with the owner of the animal, and we had other issues as well. So, you know, unfortunately I had to get this far, but, you know, sometimes people are just plain obdurate. So, yeah, we were certainly yeah. looking for some cooperation to happen prior to taking these actions, <laughs> but uh, right. it didn't happen. So, yeah. but, no, but thank you for our for the support. Yeah. Usually, you send somebody to talk to somebody about their dog, and they're yeah. good to deal with. But yeah, no. sometimes they aren't, and yeah. that's what we've run into here, which yeah. has made things worse for everybody, yeah. including us. So, yeah. um, and. John's been more than patient with trying to deal with this, and I know other people have too. Yeah, so that's not the dog's fault. It's no, it's fault. it's not. Dog's a nice dog. Yeah, yeah. I hope he gets a new home. It's never the animal's fault. Yeah, so. It's it's safe and well cared for where yeah. it is right now. Yeah. So okay, so are we ready to move along? Anybody on Zoom? No raised hands. Okay. Um, I move we adjourn. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye.